Hello, people. Today I have with us the Premium Bandai Iron Blooded Orphans Mobile Suit Gundam High Grade 144 Scale Aisle Frame Sheet and Custom Ryu Sego. A lot of name for just a little guy here. It is a very pink version of the uh, Aisle Frame Sheet in, and I really like it. Now, they do have this kit in the normal form, uh, generally produced. I haven't seen it, so I don't have it to compare it to this one, but that is in a brown and gray motif. This pink one is, I think, uh, it's just a little cooler. Uh, and then it is a custom version, so you do have uh, that Ryusego painting motif on there, and I didn't expect that to pop off so easily, but there you have it. Um, it is a really cool little mobile suit from the second series of the Iron-Blooded Orphans anime. So I just wanted to show some of the cool things that this has. Um, it's not the most uh, unique suit. It's not the best example of what comes with uh, a high-grade mobile suit. In my opinion, I don't even think it's uh, it's all that great for an Iron-Blooded Orphans one. Uh, but it is pretty cool, and it is a P-Band-A um, hard-to-come-by version of the same mobile suit, uh, which, you know, is already... Decently difficult to come by now that Iron Blood and Orphans has waned in, pop in popularity. They have been producing Season 2 suits, but they haven't gotten this one out just yet. Uh, and I am waiting. I am excited to get that one when it does come out. Now, usually when you get a premium Bandai suit uh, kit, it comes with just a little bit more than the standard release. This one actually comes with less instead of um, an additional weapon or a shield or something like that. This one just has the pink motif, and it has these cool shoulder blades, the shoulder add-ons, the thrusters. But it actually takes away a shield that normally comes with this suit. Um, it's like a riot shield. And you do get the weapon still, so you get the partisan and the uh, the rifle. But um, but yeah, that's uh, it's one of the things that is a drawback for this one if you get this one versus the normal the other thing is, uh, I don't know if you've ever ordered a uh, premium Bandai kit, and it has been a problem with all of the ones that I've gotten so far, with the exception of the 30-minute missions versions, but the uh, instructions are kind of lacking. This is the instructions uh, for the normal one, so you don't get a write-up for this suit in particular. You get the one for Hush, um, and then this is the form. This is the only variation, so you get the the little antenna, commander antenna, that you didn't get with the normal version, and uh, the shoulder add-ons. That's it. I mean, that's the only upgrade to it. But you do get it in a nice pink that you could have done by painting. It's just a thing. Uh, not too bad, though. It's it's nothing to complain about. I'm not going to complain about it. But if you don't mind, I'll just go ahead and go into the articulation. <laughs> if you've built an Iron-Blooded Orphans mobile suit before, you'll kind of get the idea of where the uh, design way as has gone. There's two ball joints in the neck. As you saw when I popped that off, it does just have that ball there and then a ball at the top that plugs into the head. So you get everything that you would normally get there. You also get the cool little visor lift up that um, shows that under eye, which is a sticker, you know, just like the pink eye right there and the white commander cap right here is also a sticker. Moving to the side here, the Inside there is a poly cap, so you can move that quite a lot. And then you can move this up and down. So the shoulder does have an articulation point on the armor. And then you have the articulation point of these two pieces here. Let's you lift and raise that shoulder just like so. That also is the rotation point for the upper arm. And you can move that as you'd like. You can see he lost his head. The elbow is a simple bend here. Very simple two-point articulation. And then at the wrist, you do have just the ball that plugs into the socket of the normal suit. So you have that rotation there. In the abdomen here, there is the ball joint that goes down to the bottom, but you also get the lift point here a rotation point 
inside the middle of the torso so you can move that up and down. And then it also shows the other point of articulation that is unusual to this mobile suit in particular, and that's this chest piece here can move in and out. And I think that's where the, uh, I think that's where the pilot would be sitting. So it is pretty, pretty cool to see something like that, but it doesn't lift up enough to see where the cockpit would be just enough to kind of accommodate the inside moving here. Like I said, that did pop into one of these here ball joints. So it's nice and easy and you get everything that you would normally get out of that. The hips here, they do actually rotate just as I showed there. You can see the whole upper section of that crotch armor can move. And then each of these can move up and down independently on a small piece from the PC-02 um, sprue, which is the poly caps. So you go ahead and put that back in there. And then those rotate on that axis there. Uh, there is also the up and down motion from these. You can move these in and out like so. Kind of looks unfinished down there, doesn't it? The hip joints are two pieces with the poly cap in between. And then that allows you to move those any way you'd like this way and this way. They also afford a rotation at the top of the leg two points of articulation inside the knee so you can move it there and you can move it here as well so upper upper and lower and that gets you quite a lot but it's nothing to write home about especially for the iron-blooded orphans where normally it would be a lot more uh, the bottom section here actually plugs into a socket down here in a ball joint form Normally, these are a little bit more articulated. This one isn't, though. Uh, so you just get a standard point of articulation there, and you get a bend at the toe, like so. Nothing to write home about, like I said, for an Iron-Blooded Orphans kit. This is actually a downgrade compared to some of the others. That leaves us to a discussion of weapons. Now, the weapon system here... Um, just the rifle and the partisan. The partisan is definitely the big one of the group. Um, if you take it out of the hand, you can store it in many locations on the body, uh, including at the back, uh, which is here. You can put it in here and then that folds over and holds it in place which it doesn't do very well, I will admit, but it can plug in just like so. Let's see if I can do it without screwing it up. It shouldn't be this hard either, I mean, really. So it just kind of holds in place like that. Uh, that is number one, and number two would be, and that's right, this does fold down, I forgot about that right here, uh, which you can turn over as well, like so, and be held on the side here. Uh, the same is not true of the gun. The gun is supposed to be able to plug into this thing and hold, be held on here, but I haven't been able to do that, and it doesn't hold in place on this, which is kind of a shame, because you do have two slots for uh, holding, and I assume you can try to do this one sideways. It might work a little bit better, but it's not really doing it. So that one just goes on the hand. In in my book, that's where it's gonna go, and that's where he's gonna stay. And you can tell that uh, head is for some reason popping out more often than it usually does on these Iron-Blooded Orphans kits. That is something I am surprised by. Normally they're a lot more stable, at least on the head. The waist is usually where it loses its uh, stuff because of the weight of the armor but yeah that's the plug-in just like that and he's able to shoot just like any other mobile suit in terms of size he's a 
pretty decently tall because he is from the Iron-Blooded Orphans universe. They are generally tall. Um, but compared to this Gundam, he's not the tallest. Let's see if I can get him to stand up next to him. The GBN base Gundam from the Build Diver series. Here he is beside the Alto from the 30 Minute Mission series. This one would be a closer match in my opinion. And um, if I hadn't mentioned before, and I think I have, these are very compatible with each other in terms of the jointing and ball, the ball joint system and the uh, three millimeter ports are very similar. So you can swap out a lot of parts from these ones. It's definitely pretty cool. Here he is beside the Jinrai from the Frame Arm series. Jinrai doesn't want to stand up right now. You can tell he's quite a bit taller than the 1144 IO frame Sheeden. And beside my little 124 scale, that is Nero. Little guy there. Lastly but not leastly, my very large Master Grade Alex. You can tell that one does have that same imposing form as he normally does with my mobile suits. And with that, a rather lackluster uh, premium Bandai review is finished. I don't hate him for what he is because he is simply a mobile suit from the Iron-Blooded Orphan series that didn't get a lot of time to shine. Uh, they upgraded from this one. They didn't really upgrade from it, uh, but they kind of moved on from the IO frames uh, pretty quickly in terms of the ground war that they were fighting at the very beginning of the series. And they moved into all kinds of other places. So he didn't really get an opportunity to show off. Um, that said, there could have been a little bit more pizzazz to it. Maybe another weapon because it is a premium Bandai unit. And without the shield, I think that's just a big bummer. Because the shield is pretty cool. This is the shield that I'm talking about. That's a nice looking slab of metal that, you know, I just don't get to see. Because, here, let me turn it the brightness a little bit lower. And you see that, that big old slab of metal, it just isn't going to be seen because um, it was he didn't use it. This, uh, this particular pilot didn't use it. And uh, it's, it's, kind of, it's kind of a bummer. But in any case, it is a decent mobile suit. I really like it. Um, I definitely want to get more of the mobile suits from this line. Uh, I love Iron-Blooded Orphans, personally. And the IO frame is one of my favorites. I saw it and I was like, hey, man, this one's really, really cool. But in any case, uh, because they don't have it, I'm not going to complain too much about it. But with that said, I'll go ahead and let you guys go. Stop bugging you about this, like I said, pretty lackluster kit. Um, and we will see you guys next time or you'll see me. Uh, more than likely, though, you'll see my stuff. Bye-bye.